the shoot that I was just on Friday. Um, it was non-union, by the way. Non-union. Mm -hmm. I do non-union every once in a while. Came in last minute. I'm like, sure, why not? So um, I did it. I think my rate was 700. Yeah, my rate was 700 for 12. So I got a really big reduction in my rate from 950, nine, no, 975 for 10. And I, when I do a 12-hour day, that's like 1300 for labor, okay, for commercials, very high rates. Uh, similar rates in feature films and TV, by the way, union rates. Non-union rates, they can charge, they can offer whatever they want. But they know if they go too low, they're not going to find anybody good. And then they're going to, you know, have a messed up production. So they try to stay in a good zone. So this one was 700 for 12. I'm like, okay, that's on the edge, but okay. And then they're like 700 for gear. I'm like, okay, well, let me see the boards. Some of the boards. So then they send over the boards so I can see what we're doing, what they want me to include for $700, because this is where I now have my negotiation power. I look at what they want to do, and I look at what I think that we're going to need, and then I'm like, well, looks like we're going to have to wire these people. Looks like we're going to need uh, this for playback. And typically the rate is this and this and this, so that, that totals up to about here. So what if we meet in the middle around here? Will that work for you? Okay, it's a very smart negotiation like that. Because if you just say, no, I don't work, I don't, I don't throw in, what do they call it, all in. We want it all in. If you're like, no, I don't work that way, then they're like, okay, we're not going to ever call you again. You're not going to work with us. I mean, the fact is, is that the production supervisor, who there's the producer, production supervisor, and then the coordinator, the production supervisor is supposed to get those numbers to, to get the job done and has been given a budget for each position, each job, each everything to have them come in on, on, um, on, on budget. So then they're working with a script where it wasn't accounted for that they're going to need to spend extra money on this equipment, you know? So they're like, hey, this is not my fault. I just, I, I just have this job. I'm supposed to stick to the numbers. What am I supposed to do? Can you do it for what, can you do it for, can you do this job for what I have? That's, that's, that is their perspective. Now, my perspective is like, I don't want to run my ass around and use all my equipment for that amount of money. I mean, that's like, you know, I, I don't want jobs like that. I don't want, I, that's not fair. Okay, so that would be from my perspective. So what you do is you've got to find that middle ground because this person that's working on this non-union shoot as a production supervisor in a month could be working as a union uh, commercial production supervisor. Yeah, people move all over the place, just like I do. I'm on this shoot, this shoot, this shoot. So they do as well. So therefore, the relationships are extremely important. And how you handle yourself as a professional is extremely important. Now, I know some of this, you're not to this part yet, but it doesn't matter. I think it's still very good. Yes, any craft, any craft is going to be like this, you know, um, or any job, really. It's just helpful for you to understand the inner workings of things so you can see how I think and how I approach it. And then you will, when you get into the situation, you'll kind of be, have a good sensibility as well with it. Um, so I look at the boards and I'm like, okay, so these things need to, uh, we're probably going to need these things. Although there's only so much I can see from the boards and they can add new things or it can be completely different. So what they told me before the shoot for the $700 and that's all that they had in the budget. Well, um, they're like, okay, so it's just ambience. There's no dialogue at all. No dialogue. At all. I'm like, okay, great. And I see the board. I'm like, okay, it looks like looks like there's no ambience. Okay. And then they're like, we need 15 contacts. <laughs> now, whenever they're shooting ambience, nobody wants to listen to ambience. So I called him. And I'm like, uh, so 15 contacts? Are we doing dialogue now? No, no, it's just ambient still. I'm like, oh, usually the, they don't want context unless there's going to be dialogue. No, no, it's just ambient. So I'm like, okay, okay, great. All right, great. Sounds good. See you tomorrow, right? Always very cheerful, you know. And then I arrive there, um, and, there, and uh, the, again, the same guy, the production supervisor, comes and says, yeah, we got the music. It's just, and um, I'll d give it to you on the, um, he's, like, uh, he's like, like, I got the music. Um, I'm going to email it to you. I'm going to email you the link like okay great so I get the link and it's like a whole but like it's the Dropbox link is massive so I'm like oh this is gonna take all of my data <laughs> load in this stuff down so I'm like and I've already got to very quickly get this on there because 
It could be the first shot up. You just don't know. So I'm like, I need Wi-Fi. So, and I was thinking about you guys. I'm like, okay, these are kind of, this is the kind of problems that is very helpful to hear somebody talk about so that you know how to handle it. You know how to be thinking. You know about the kind of the stressors and the situations that we are in as professionals so that you can handle it too. So I'm like, I got to find fast Wi-Fi. So I'm kind of waiting for Video Village to set up so I can get their Wi-Fi. Now, Video Village doesn't want people on their Wi-Fi because that slows down their jo their work. So you have to get permission for it. You don't just go over and like, oh yeah, that is, now I got it. And um, so, but they were taking too long to get set up. So then I went to the motorhome and they had Wi-Fi. So I sat there and I downloaded everything and it was good because it was a massive amount of stuff. And uh, so then, and I did that right away. I'm like, boom, boom, I get, I, I get set up. I'm boom, 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 boom. And I talked to the director. And I'm like, yep, got the music, listen to it. There's three different beats. And he's like, okay, so, and then we want everybody wired. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, great. So we're doing dialogue? Yes. I'm like, oh, okay. I heard it was ambience, but that's okay. That's fine. And, you know, because at that point, you're not going to be like, oh, well, they told me this. And then he's like, oh. Then you're making other people look bad. <laughs> Even though they weren't completely accurate because they just want you to do the job. I didn't have a boom op that day. <laughs> Piece of information that you need to know. Yeah, so I'm doing a job without my entire team, you know. And th why it's important to me is I want to look good always. I don't want to ca get caught with my pants down, meaning all of a sudden I can't get the sound because I don't have a boom up because the person and the person that is mic'd is doing a, a jumping all over the place and nobody knows that that sounds no good, but it's like, psh, 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 psh. you know what I mean? With clothing noise. I don't have a boom and they, they don't re consider that. And now they're like, oh, that scene's all fucked up because what's happened? Who did the sound on this? And then you're like, dude, you didn't give me a, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's so many situations like this. So what matters is you become very smart, very careful on how you word things um, so that people understand and you take care of the, you try to always find the best solution. It's always solution, 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 never problem, problem, problem. So with the director, I'm like, okay, yeah, sounds good. No problem. We'll uh, have, a, we'll have a PA boom. <laughs> And um, so, and the AD was right there. I'm like, Julian, we got somebody that's boomed before. You know, Julian's like, yeah, we'll get somebody that's boomed before. We'll get somebody good. So then I get somebody, I'm like, have you boomed before? No. <laughs> but he had a great attitude. And of course, he doesn't know what he's doing. So it wasn't really that good. But still, it covered, it, it was good because I had somebody with a boom mic in there. And since I was doing playback, also, I have to use my cart, so I can't be portable. So I am outside with my cart, with my computer, with the playback, with the speakers, with the him and the mics and the, all this stuff. And it was easy, but it was, if, if I, w I was thinking, man, if I had gotten this job, like, you know, years ago, like when I started, I would have been fucking freaking out, like, I would have been like kind of um, upset that they didn't tell me the truth because they were trying to get me at the lower rate or the equipment rate or whatever. Anyway, so then, um, and so, you know, the experience makes it easier and the experience allows you to then have constructive conversations with people so that they, they kind of knew that I'm going to charge more than that 700. So they asked for the 15 contacts. I'm like, okay, well, I'll bring them. And he, and he goes, okay, well, then we'll um, see what we can do about the gear rate. So then I, after I talked to the director, I, my, I came back to the production supervisor and said, okay, so I got the Comtex out. Uh, director definitely wants dialogue all day, so we're going to have radio mics. And then we got playback. I've got that ready to go. So yeah, we'll figure out something that works for everybody here. So I'm setting the stage for an invoice. And then at the end of the day, I'm talking to him. At the very end of the day, it's like dark out, 6.30, I think it is. And um, he's like, so what do you normally charge? I'm like 9.50, 95 per wire, 15 per Comtec, uh, 75 for the lock box. He's like, oh, he's like 95 per wire. Is that, do you include anything in the 9.50? I'm like, no. He's like, that's crazy. That's insane. I'm like, huh? I said, well, that's what I've been charging for 25 years. 
<laughs> so I'm not sure if that was the best response, but whatever. You know what I mean? It's like he's obviously used to dealing with lower budget people that include extra pieces of equipment. I am top notch. I do the biggest stuff. Working with Damien Chazelle in two weeks and Jennifer Aniston. I'm doing the biggest stuff. So you call me. I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll include everything. Only if I decide to. So anyway, um, interesting, right? Interesting. So then he's like, okay, well, we'll, he says, send me the invoice with a full amount and we'll come up with something in the middle. I'm like, that's perfect. That's great. I'm like, sounds good to me. And thank you so much. I really appreciate the job. And it was a great job. Went really smoothly. And um, yeah, I mean, director's happy. Everybody's happy. So, and it's the, so then everybody's happy because that's what counts the most. All right. Yes, they charge a kit fee. Yes, a kit rental. Kit rental. Call it kit rental. Or your package. Kit rental. Uh, and it varies. So if you're wondering, you know, if the craft that you want to get into has a kit rental, when you see them carrying stuff around, like production supervisors will have their own stuff. There's, they might have their printer. They might have their, um, you know, like a toolbox of highlighters and sharpies and staplers and paper clips and that's their kit and their kit has to be renewed and it's not just for free they charge maybe 50 bucks for that makeup artists have their kit quite an extensive kit hair has their kit grips have or not not grips but the gaffer's got the lighting truck and then key grips got grip equipment a whole truck there you got vtr that's got all their equipment you got dit that's got all their equipment and you've got assistant cameras that have their own follow focus equipment and lenses and locket boxes. Um, so, you know, if you have a department that doesn't typically have a kit, like Boom Operator does not have a kit, for, one, for example, or Grips don't have a kit, for example, then you don't get kit rental because you don't have a kit. So, um, and also you're like, well, can I start charging a kit even if my department doesn't have a kit? No, no, it's not budgeted for. So it's established parameters what, who has a kit that would need to, um, uh, you know, charge for their kit. Make sense? My plan was to move out to LA. I didn't really have much of a plan beyond that. I was a project manager. I helped other people achieve their dreams. And after a few years of that, I started to realize I wasn't working on my dreams. I worked at Apple. I worked at the Genius Bar for four and a half years. Yeah, it was great. I was making money, but I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. I felt very stuck. I was in the audiovisual industry for 15 years. So I had gone to film school for about three, four years. You feel like you're working on a film set and everyone's so, you know, enthralled in the project, but nobody could actually figure out like how to actually get in the industry. Two or three years after film school, I'm still twiddling my thumbs, sitting on a degree, wondering how the heck do I get in? I wouldn't have even believed it if you told me three years ago that I would have worked on these productions. Stranger Things season three, MacGyver seasons two and three, The Resident seasons one and two, Legacies, The Vampire Diaries, First Man. I just worked on a feature film recently called Son of the South. I've done sound mixing, first assistant director, second assistant director. I've been a grip, I've been a gaffing PA, a camera PA, and a host. Oh, I've done acting too. I've already got cast into a web series up in Phoenix that is paid. I'm actually gonna be going there on September 18th and 19th. Um, I've been cast in a, a feature that's going to be shot here as well as up in Phoenix. Um, five pages of uh, lines, which is awesome. And that's paid as well. I worked for Discovery Plus. I worked for MTV, TLC, uh, Animal Planet. Most recently, the Oprah interview with Harry and Meghan Markle, HBO Max show called The Full Bloom, Canine Intervention, MTV Ghosted, Ninja Warrior, Ellen's Next Greatest Designer. So America's Got Talent was the show that actually brought me out to Los Angeles. Bug Juice, which is for Disney Channel out in Maine. I worked on um, Treehouse Masters in Pennsylvania. I've been travel coordinating for the past year and a half on a multitude of game shows, travel shows, Gordon Ramsay shows. Like, I worked with Kevin Hart, with Snoop Dogg, um, oh my gosh, Lance Bass, like a whole bunch of crazy A-listers that you wouldn't even think you're like literally this close to. 
If you have no idea how the film business works and you are trying to ask me like, oh, how did you get started? Like you need training. I studied it vigilantly. Like I, I, I treated it like it was a school. Friends in film genuinely, what I tell everyone, Janet does not give you jobs. Janet shows you how to find the jobs. She shows you how to get on those jobs. And ultimately, she's teaching you how to be in demand. I've hardly actually applied for anything. Even the jobs that I've applied for, it's people referring me saying, hey, they're waiting for your resume. Go ahead and submit it so they can give you an interview. I'm not the one looking for these jobs. I'm not the one, hi, I saw you had this job posted, like I'm in demand. Mentors pay for themselves in so many ways, but more than anything, it's save, it, it saves you grief, it saves you lost time, it saves you money. She walked me through step by step. Um, within about a year and a half, I got into the union. Uh, within a year, two years, I started working on TV shows and then I actually just finished my uh, the first theatrical feature uh, with 20th Century Fox within three and a half years of this beautiful woman right here getting me into the industry.